this week. Just as though Kerno may have him by his side. Simpson's been a wonderful player for Carlton over a long period of time, 270 games. So here we go. It's going to be Cruiser and Grundy. And it's the Blues trying to get it away. Taylor Adams over the top. Gibbs is there as well for Carlton. And the first stoppage of a wintry afternoon here at the MCG. Murphy had it held. Hoskin Elliott making sure he's going nowhere. Interesting Levi Greenwood starting on the bench. So maybe it's going to be one that Buck sort of sees who gets off the chain a little bit. Um, before doing anything. Yeah, before yeah. doing it. So it's an interesting one. Murphy again trying the block. Unsuccessful. Opportunity now for Degoe back in the lineup. Had it and then lost it. Kerno's hand pass partly smothered. Broomhead goes wide. Collingwood with possession and out of trouble towards Smith. Tucked on the boundary line. Marchback chops it off in the last line of defence. Coming off the best game of his career. Now Rising Star. Nomination last week. Pumps it along the boundary line. Grundy stands under it. Kerner with the big fly. Pendlebury started in the middle. This week again, as expected, after starting at full forward Anzac Day, which was a surprise. Ed Kerner puts his head down, as you always expect. Tough, tight start. Grizzly day. Plenty around the ball. And there was already a couple of pushes, shoves, and injured players behind players. Kerno keeps himself up slowly with Trelaw. Ball up. Grundy, cruiser. Grundy, the flick from behind. Tried to get it down to Pendlebury. He was forced to tackle from behind. Now Petrescu Seaton can't keep it alive, and we'll get another ball in for Hoping for upwards of 70,000 here at the MCG today. They had low crowds last year, 60,000 and 56,000 for this epic battle, but bigger occasion today. And I think considering the security arrangements, some may miss the bulk of the first quarter. Ball in the middle of the ground. An opportunity now for Carlton. That was through Wright, who booted four goals last week. Grundy took his eye off the ball and lost it. Adams, working hard, had a big last quarter last week with 14 disposals. Now the advantage is being paid. Ball goes inside 50, but only momentarily. Just those short, sharp handballs, boys, on days like today can get you into trouble. We're already seeing that. So the team that quickly adapts to that territory game could get some early advantage. Kaz Bolt's got to beat a couple here. Taylor Adams has possession. He goes towards centre wing. One grab, not enough on that occasion for Plowman. Petrescu seat goes back once again, and Marchbank pulls it back up towards the half forward line, chopped off once again, however, by Smith. Had a good game last week as well. 26 disposals, goes laterally towards side bottom. The bounce is favourable before him. He has a look downfield, unsure as to where to go. Thought about to go, he going short, now goes backwards to Reed. Kind of rested last week, so it should be reasonably fresh. Pumps it down the square towards Pendlebury. Tied up with Simpson, good battle that. Murphy, back to Simpson, squeezed it wide. Little fumble, Doherty got it off, back to Murphy. Good movement, spears it to Levi. And he has been in sensational goal-kicking form. Yeah, and that's the reason why I think with Murphy I'd be going with Greenwood Murphy if the Bucks was preparing anyone to tag. As we said, Greenwood start off the ground because his ability to get outside, he got the, the one-two there, kept on running and delivered it really nicely to, to Casbolt. From a 39% goal kicker to a 69% goal kicker this year. As we spoke about pre-game, it makes such a huge difference to a team. If you can nail one early, it's across the face. And a horror shot in the end, unfortunately, for him, Mark to Maynard. The Blues didn't have a lot of players on the line waiting for that one either. They had probably too much confidence in him. Reed heads back. Moore gets his first chance at it. Ran under it a little. Rode it well. Back to Simpson. Just barrels one in. Tough to Mark. Kerno nearly plucked it. Daisy Thomas against his old team. Back into the lineup for the Blues this week. Pump back outside 50. Cripps had a chance. Rowe gets his opportunity. Fumble initially. Cripps, clean hands. Touches it on the deck. Clever. Nothing to go to. Doesn't want to waste it. Feeds it all the way back. Oh. Trouble. 
Dick Alley, Hunter down Doherty. He squeezed it wide. The Simpson and everybody takes a breath. Simpson comes across the ground to Cripps. Still on the defensive side of centre. Goes straight down the middle. The target is Levi. And a good one clunk. Casbolt just guides it up towards the 50 metre line. Good Kick hand. was positive and the mark taken by Graham. Best hands in the business, Levi and Casbolt, I think, Ruzzi. Yeah, no, he has. Very, very clean. Good one, Grabber. Graham playing just his second game for the season. The Morris medalist five years ago. And still looking for his first goal this season. A stammering approach. Just pops it up to the top of the square. Casbold is there, but he's got plenty of opposition. Pushed towards the line. Seeing it over. It was Chris. Forward stop is going to be really important. Often a, an area of the game where he can pinch a goal, whether that be a free kick or a little wrap around. Really important. Grundy, front spot ahead of Cruiser. Hand pass was okay on that occasion. Hoskin Elliott again in the thick of things early. He'll be growing in confidence at his new club. Greenwood. Gets it away quickly towards Goldsack. Now they're out of strife. Over the centre, up towards the half forward line. Cox waiting down. The big man does the roving work, then tries to belt it out of the air with his foot. Hardly successful. White gets the hand pass away in towards the middle. Ineffective, however. Collingwood still a chance, although Murphy intercepts. Gives it away. Now it's Cripps. Goes laterally to the outer wing, and Kerno takes the mark. Plays on quickly. Goes out wide. Finding Graham. Crowd still building here. Rain stop for the time being. Out to Ed Kerno. He's tough. Doesn't mind a whack or two early just to keep his mind on it. The Blues brothers both out there. Charlie can play a bit too, and he is growing before our eyes. Charlie Kerno. Ball in Casbolt's direction. Charlie couldn't get the jump at it. He was hoping to. A roller. Cripps. Dragged down, but he dropped it. Then he's got it back again. Flicks it back out. Adams knocked it on the winter ground. Chris straight down the middle. Good mark, Doherty wide. White corralled it. Silvani. Strange to see a Silvani playing in the rain without long sleeves. Puts his head down. Second game for the Blues. The second cousin tied up in the middle of the congested area at half forward. No one getting it out. Finally rolls out. Wittering had a chance. Pendlebury slippery ball. Maynard picks it up. Open space if Collingwood can get it forward. Dick Alley. Here's his moment. He's got more running long. He's got side bottom inside or he's got Jeremy Howe. He wants Jeremy Howe. Floats it to him. Sits it on him. He's good enough. Landed like a cat. Went back inside. Blues have got the extra man back. Greenwood was the man. Dick Alley couldn't get it to him. Still a chance to mop that mess up. Keeps it alive. Back to Greenwood. Put his head down. Got one for too high. Yeah, Darcy Moore need to be a little bit more defending ahead of the ball there, boys. Uh, he just left his lead a little bit too late, and the Collingwood player wanted to kick it short, which is not really advised in these wet conditions. Darcy Moore need to draw that long to the top of the goal square. Against Plowman, so Greenwood is going to the top of the square once again. No one able to take it cleanly. Elliott was in there trying to shark it out. Eventually the hand pass comes wide, but it's dangerous, very dangerous. Pushed towards the boundary line. Fasolo gets there late. Kick towards the half-back line, and Reed almost took a courageous mark from behind. The ball spills free, and it's over the line. That's where Collingwood would need to set up uh, a wall, Ruzzi, and get some ball played in their forward half. It's been all Carlton's in the first part of this first quarter. Yeah, it's a two-on-one. Kuno did a terrific job there just to bring the ball to ground because that was one that Reed could have possibly marked and launched it back in. Grundy front spot, Cruiser out of the air, almost had a fresh air shot. Kerno gets a hurried kick, no one at home. All Collingwood, there was three of them there. And the mark taken by Lyndon Dunn. Enjoying it, it is at New Club. He gives a little ground to Reed. He may go back to Dunn. This time down the line. Poor kick. The target was Phillips, didn't find him, however. Phillips has the chance to go again. Loses out in the end to Wietering. The hand pass comes wide. Chance now for Williamson, who's been very good in the last couple of weeks. 
Again, running out of room. Good work by Carton there. They numbered off well over that stoppage, Weezy. Good signs. Uh, defensively, they've got it. their midfielder's got a good defensive mindset. They're able to spread from the clearance. So definitely the Carlton midfielder's work rate is up early. That was the last time they met. Collingwood winning eight goals to six. And we started this game with ten goalless minutes as well. In fact, scoreless minutes. Not even a behind has been posted yet. Murphy tried to shake and bake on Greenwood. Didn't work. Wrapped him up. No prior ball in. Dwayne, are you gonna, Collingwood will find it hard to score. Because if you look Doherty behind, let's see this tackle here. Good tackle by Groom. But Doherty's setting up right behind in the defensive 50 as a loose play at the moment. A couple of times Collingwood have looked up and seen Doherty there and they haven't been able to pull the trigger on their kicks. You sense the 70,000 crowd just waiting to erupt with the first goal being scored. Right. Hit the belly of the ball, went straight up in the air and uh, clever juggled Hoskinelli. I'm not sure it was 15. He juggled it five. Oh. Gets it back, Hoskinelli. Pendlebury wanted to give it back. Then he goes. Good movement inside. Broomhead in. Daniel Wells out if he's just joined us. That's why he's out there. Pendlebury short. No free kick paid. Play on the call. He thought it was going to be a free kick. White goes back. And now Murphy on the wing. Takes them up. And that smell that hurt Graham. He's left the ground and is receiving some attention. Thomas, Daisy back in business. Up towards Casbolt, but it's belted away by Colsack over the line. Well done by Tyson Goldsack in his 148th game. So there's Doherty there, Sandy. You can see him directing traffic. Now he's going to sit back behind, so it's going to be very difficult for Collingham to get a fast play goal because when they look up, they're going to see a 2v1. Cruiser down in front looking for Cripps. Pendlebury was there for Collingwood. Both go to ground. Cripps is hatching it. So a stoppage just outside the 50. Still no score to either side. Almost 12 minutes played in this first term. Intermittent showers. Key for the afternoon. Kerno runs out of room. Maynard gets a hurried kick. It's going to be OK, however. Phillips takes the mark, goes in towards the middle. And is that 50? It is. Going to side bottom and against Simpson. The veteran can't believe it. Side bottom. Star for Collingwood. It has been for a long time. He goes long. There will be the first score, but he's away to the right. And the first behind of the day goes on the ball. Did you see that, Rosie? A little hot. Well, but he just spoiled the ball, yeah. so if it's not a mark, then it's a free kick. So it can't be uh, a 50 if you haven't marked the ball. So he must have paid the mark before he, uh, he gave the 50, but it looked a bit stiff to me. Carriage got it with Doherty, went straight down the spine. Good movement, this. Smets gets a chance to pump the Blues inside, 50. Casbolt wide, goes a little more central. He's still got a chance at it, knocked it down. Adams, good tackle for Trevsky Seaton. Fumbled the ball. Ed Kerno through legs. Missed Gibbs. Great tackle on Chris. Petrovsky Seaton! Something out of nothing. And the crowd get a chance to erupt finally. Well, it's good. Uh, you touched on it, Brown. Carl looked like their midfield at the moment is just working a little bit hard. They tend to get a bit, um, it's low scoring. It's only one goal to one point. But if you had to say who looks up and about, some good pressure there. It's certainly Carlton at the moment. They seem to be getting to the next contest better than Carlton midfielders, don't they, Rizzi? Uh, really uh, good intensity, early, good urgency. Patricia Seaton's been a really good pickup for the Carlton forward line. How valuable is a guy like Levi Casbold? You can just yeah. make the contest there, Rizzi and bring it together. It makes it predictable for those two guys in screen, Matty Wright and Petreski Seaton. They know where the drop of the ball is going to get, especially in wet conditions like today. Yeah, it's one of the most frustrating things as a coach when uh, intercept marks in your back line. Cripps, clever little hand pass. It'll be a free kick to Gibbs. Rusey, I think today in these conditions, it's the football IQ test. Where you position yourself, how you use the ball, the smart players really stand out. Yeah, and I mean, keep an eye on Doherty there, Kingy, for that reason. I think he's just been fantastic. You can see Rowe now behind the ball, Kingy, but keep an eye on that area of the ground because I think Carlton have made a conscious effort to leave one back behind the play. And it'll be interesting to see how Collingwood can navigate that. Archbank and Broomhead see it over the line on the outer side.
Cox to do the ruck work. Head front spot. In the wards the middle and <laughs> holding on. Not very subtle either. So it'll come back. It's probably the easiest decision that umpire will ever make, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> Silvani, what a week he had last week. Against Sydney and Buddy. Always been tough to play, and I played him a couple of times, Sandy, during my career. Silvani, and very tough. He's actually a lot quicker than people think. Good competitor. Is that what made him tough, his speed? Yeah, no doubt about it. Marchbank unable to mark. Push down in front, that could have been a shove. Graham over the top, but Kerno he, there as well. He's got good size as well, Sandy, so he can compete with the guys in a one-on-one -on -one marking contest. But then also he's got that good closing speed in that last couple of metres, which will be important on Darcy Moore, who's pretty quick. Casbolt and Cox. Side bottom. Trying to get away from Simpson. He was held on that occasion. And side bottom will take the free kick. That was the thing that stood out Brownie last week for me for Silvani. I never realised how quick he was. He closed down Buddy a couple of times with some tackles and some spoils. It was terrific to watch. Short to read. Pies taking the long way home, but that's okay. Now they go towards for solo territory and more. No mark. They come away towards Howell. He's running out of room, and he has. So a throw in in Collingwood's right forward pocket. Even though he didn't mark that, I, I love Darcy Moore, what he did then, Ruzi. He worked his man out yeah. to the point post, and then he worked back into the top of the goal square. He was able to drop his man. That's really good forward craft from a young key forward. Should be confident. Two goals, two last week. And highest possession tally of his short AFL career. 17 possessions. Trelaw feeds it out. Side bottom. Good options are plenty. Adams hits a good spot with that. Almost. Oh. It is almost off hands. Moore tried to get the kick away. To go, he lays a tackle. Splendid tackle. Backed him out of the tackle rather than riding the back. Silvani in the middle of it. 20 players around it. What do you do here as a defender, Ruzi? You just or a defender on midfield, you just have to take a man here in these forward stoppages for the opposition. Yeah, absolutely. You want everyone manning up, and then you want to try and get a little bit of cover with an extra midfielder. Green would try to spin out of the congestion, spin into Ed Kerno, get another ball up. Every player within a kick of this ball. Yeah, time in forward half, 62% to 38. Carlton's favour, so they've certainly had the better of them. Casbolt back doing the ruck work against Cox, who put his hand on it. Crisp across the face, and only eight behind. So a disappointing start for the massive Collingwood fans who've made the journey for the 125th birthday game. Only early, but 18 goalless minutes for the Magpies to start. Simpson to himself. Creates a bit of ground as he comes... Down the line, towards the half-back line. Howe was the jumper. Daisy Thomas out of the air, heading towards the boundary line. And taken over. By Cripps. I'm not sure we'll see many uh, deliberate out-of-bounds played today or, or not trying to keep the ball in. Certainly be a lot of kicks off the side of the boot, I would have thought. Insufficient intent. <laughs> what is the excess? Is it trying to get it ingrained into us? <laughs> insufficient so, so intent. Insufficient intent it's the new to keep the ball in. Is that Last what it word? is? Yep. Okay. Kasbolt front spot. Bruce Petrevsky Seaton went out and hard and he goes again. He locks in a good tackle. Spills free to Pendlebury. Gives it off towards the teammate there in Trelaw. Couldn't do anything with it. Now the race is on. Reed will get there first. Wietering closes in on him. And he gets his kick. And it's going to be wide. And kept in play by Silvani. And Alex for the moment. I'm just trying to keep an eye on um, Collingwood's forward line, Sandy. It looks like they're going with five forwards. That's why Carlton are getting a drop-off player every time. And I'm trying to pick it, pick up who that midfielder is getting caught up through the middle of the ground, the stoppages. Cruiser and Grundy. Trelaw. It's a hand pass away. Oh, Petrevsky seat was right there. Smith gets a hurried kick going back towards centre wing and Simpson takes a timely mark. Could be Adams, I think, Bruzy. Yeah. I think it's Taylor Adams who's in the wing, on the wing at the moment all by himself. Yeah, He's rolling up as that sixth forward. Yeah, I think it's a mid-kingy every time, so it's a little bit hard. I think they're rotating that. But at the moment, Carlton getting an advantage of it because it's so hard for Collingwood to score. Kerno towards Graham, smashed away from him and taken over the line. 
almost 20 minutes gone, and it is Carlton leading by four points. Two teams met 253 times. Collingwood 123 wins, Carlton 126. Four draws. Two Ruckman tie up. Cripps flicks it out. Nick Kernos had a good first term. Tucked into the boundary. It's a pretty good spot with that kick. Wintering not the second grab. Flicked away last second. Little tie off the deck didn't work. Put his head down, carriage. Where Angel's feet of tread there. Went hard at it. Kept it in the area and lays the tackle to keep it there. Well, it looks like the umpire's going to be relaxed today, Dwayne, with the head high contact. Is there going to be a lot of. Uh, uh, incidental contact in these wet conditions, players falling the ground and sliding in. Looks like the umpires will be relaxed. Two experienced players brought in by the Blues, two young players out, so still a young Carlton team, but the list more experienced for this one as Grundy pumps it out of the area. Good attack from Plowman, but he left it behind. Rowe, that'll do. Graham nearly feeds it off. Bryce Gibbs, play on to advantage. Missed. See, that's a poor kick, isn't it, from Gibbs? Because he would have had Graham 30 metres out directly in front. Oh, I think he did the right thing, Brownie. Yeah, he's but one of the few you wouldn't mind playing yeah. the advantage with. Well, it wasn't a difficult it. kick. Yeah. Ramsey brings it back into play. It does frustrate the forward, though, when that happens. And a lead off for Collingwood. Pendlebury, quick hands. Kerno has been busy, as Dwayne said. Pendlebury asking the question, but boys have suggested there may be some leniency in these conditions this afternoon. It looks like Elliott's going up now into the stoppages yeah. from the forward line. He's one of the guys, along with Taylor Adams, they're communicating a lot. So it looks like those two players are the players going up. Cruiser from behind. Murphy in towards the pocket. Petrovsky seaton takes the mark. It's poor organisation by Collingwood. Petrovsky seaton was on his own there at the front. Wietering drops back, but he elects to go short. It's going to be OK, though. Uh, taken by Graham. Preferred to have been where he was just a couple of minutes ago. Yep. And having a shot, but he's on a 45 degree angle. And kicking from just inside 50. Kicking for the Blues' second goal. A stammery, stuttering approach, but a pretty good kick off the boot. Finds the woodwork. And the second behind goes on the board for the Blues. One straight kick the difference. Carlton leading, 22 and a half gone. Back heel from Lyndon Dunn. Now to send the ball back in, it'll be a short quarter. He thumps it. Cox has got a couple to beat. Cruiser front spot, held his ground. He was called into it. He still had to hold his ground. Terrific last week as well, Matty Cruiser in Sydney. Blasted towards right, couldn't take it. Ramsey couldn't take it. Smith's had a chance at it. Smith in the thick of it. Umpire waits, hopes, Cox is a long way down. <laughs> they got him. Three and a half minutes left. Heavy rain just before the start of this one. Just repeating. No Daniel Walls for Collingwood. A late withdrawal with Broomhead in. Free kick, hold. Cruiser's ball. And he might be within range, given Graham's kick moments ago. Played every game but one. The uh, last year and a bit, Matthew Cruiser. Tenth season for him. A lot of injury issues. Huge moment in the shadows of quarter time. From the arc, struck it pretty well, but it's wide. Yeah, he's been pretty good form this year, uh, Dwayne. Uh, Matty Cruiser, he obviously uh, competes in the ruck. Uh, gets his reasonable amount of uh, hit outs, but where he's good, he gets clearances, he contributes to the tackling effort as well. Uh, he's like an extra midfielder around that middle. Gun goes short to Reed. He's called to go. He does. Down the line, on the outer side. Greenwood takes the hand pass away to Goey. Not out of trouble yet. Gibbs set the close. Now Penn will be penetrating hand pass is good towards Chris, but Carl, they're away, inside 50, one bounce, the left foot snap is also away, to the left from one behind. Well, a few 
more easy goals being missed, isn't there? But that's when you're high defence, when you get up high, Brownie, you get those little handballs through the middle, you can often come into a really open forward line. Silvani brings it back into play. Jostling with Pendlebury and also Kerno. Socket off the ground. Murphy, Simpson. Gets boot to ball so quickly and very, very effective. Now they've got a chance, Carlton, to go deep into attack. It's pulled back towards Kerning. Diving couldn't take the mark. Gibbs is there as well. Collingwood under stress here. Here's a snap in towards goal. And it looks pretty good. Carlton get their second. And they've stretched their lead to 12 points. Terrific by Simpson over the other side. You got this little kick in that you called it, Sandy. Just a little kick there just before Howe was about to smother him, which released, I think it was Graham out there. I didn't yeah, like the yeah. kick inside, though. That's, <laughs> that's a, a dangerous <laughs> kick going inside because that's turnover ball there. But it was well done. They did have the numbers there, Carlton. You can see here, that is a bad situation. And it's a shocking handball. But he's been a good player for him, right? He's kicked some really critical goals over the... The last 18 months. He was a listed free agent. Yep. Come across from Adelaide. And has been good four last week. Yep. Four right. last week. Yep. Got the first one today. Won their goal kicking last year with a measly total of 22. Different blues this year. They're on the grow. Here, right in front of your eyes. Here he is again, right from 48. This will work. Gets a spin, a roll, and up to the right side for right. But I'll tell you what, both these teams coming off victories last week, but the blues. Looking like they've adapted to the conditions quicker than Collingwood yeah. this afternoon. 11 more contested possessions already, Dwayne. It's a good sign in these conditions. No team has had a goalless first term so far this season. Is Collingwood going to be the first? Could have almost lost it there. Swung in a 360. Now Goldsack's got a problem. Gang tackled and taken to ground. Inside 50 is 12 to 5. So that's been a dominant first quarter, hasn't it? Carlton free. Yep. And under a minute remaining. Probably need one more goal, the Blues, to capitalise on, on what's been a, a 12 to 5 inside 50 quarter. Kerno's got it. He's too far out the score. Goes long and low in towards half forward. Cruiser needs someone going past. The man is Simpson. On to the left foot he goes. Does he bend it back enough? Yes, he has. Simpson. did there, Brown. He sold the, to the Collingwood guy. I'm going on the right yeah. and he just bit <laughs> and he didn't uh, and he went back on his natural left foot. Here's the original free out there. Oh, the ball, not enough effort there, I would have thought, Rosie. Maybe it was the push-out. Oh, push-up push push on Maynard. Yeah. yeah, I think Maynard, Maynard gave away the free Kerno. kick on Kerno. And if we can see it here, I love the little shimmy that Simpson gives here to sort of suggest to the Collingwood guy, I'm a right footer. Here it is him, and just a tiny little bit, and then swings on his left, as he was always going to do. But it's a really nice finish, and this is uh, after the goal. Plenty of fire. Plenty Maynard of fire gave, him one, shot, really. gave yeah. him one to the ribs then, Maynard, as yeah. well. He's pretty hard-nosed. Getting grumpy now, Collingwood. They're goalless in this 125th an 25th anniversary game. Dying seconds here. Opening term dominated by the Blues. Side bottom. Goes to half forward. Hoskin Elliott. 28 seconds left. This is the kick. Has to hit a target. Goes inside for Solo, the man. Oh, free kick. Free kick. Oh, oh, there's a block against Simpson there. He wasn't looking at the ball. And he just ran into for Solo there and blocked his run. And that's what the free kick was against. We'll see the replay. He took his eyes off the ball. And as soon as Shane McInerney saw that, the umpire, he was going to pay the free kick. Blues fans not reason? happy. Yeah, he probably went a bit early, Simpson, on the bodywork, I think. Did, did take his run away. I didn't think as he kicks the goal there, Dwayne. Oh, he's been iffy in front of goal this year as well. But he's got his mojo back. A couple of seconds left to quarter time. And Collingwood finally on the board. Well, I, I thought Simpson probably misjudged the flight of the ball. If he had kept his eye on the ball, it was actually to his advantage. We see here, just take your right, he takes his eye off the ball. Look where it bounced. It would have probably bounced... Simpson had more of a chance to mark that football than what the solo did as we see this kick go in. Yeah, I, I don't like players taking their eyes off the ball for that very reason. And that's what the umpires look for, don't yeah. they? That's their cue. As soon as the defender takes off the ball, when the ball is still a fair way away, 
Well, it took Simpson's advantage away then, Brownie, didn't it? Like, it wasn't a great kick. I think it was Trelaw coming in. Yeah. As we go back in the middle, only a couple of seconds remaining. There'll be no addition to the score. The solo, incidentally, going at 38% accuracy here at the MCG. But he's got Collingwood's only goal. So at quarter time, it is Carlton in wet, wintry conditions. have stolen a mini march. They're three goals, four, 22. And they're leading Collingwood, one goal, three, nine. Is it their minus seven for inside 50s, which is a really poor rate for them? Their midfield's been dominant with supply all season. Can they get themselves going in the second term? Crowd settling, margin 13 points. It was 19. Collingwood getting a goal seconds before the siren. Green with the clearance, so they've already got almost an inside 50. Couldn't quite squeeze it in there. Cox, Ed Kernow, most possessions in the opening term. Petrescu, Seaton, little knock on the Doherty. Strange option in these conditions. Wiedering comes up with it. Short, Casbolt. Oh, play three forward for Carl. Kernow looks up. Thomas, this will bring the house down if he can get back. Causes spoil. Smith dragged down. Three. Yeah, they blew an easy scoring opportunity. Then the Caswell Blues... Caswell didn't turn around. Yeah, he didn't turn around. He looked for a handball, and he, all he needed to do was turn around. There was a Carlton bloke running into an open goal. Reed. Still light drizzle. As David King told you, Maynard. Across the face. His defensive goal to Howe. Now to a one-on-one. -on -one. Elliot half held. Just a little arm on him from White was enough. Good to see him back. Getting some footy. Missed all of 2006 with that back injury. The Scotty Dog neck break, as they call it when they look at the X-ray. His lower back. Cruiser. And Grundy. Grundy rolls it to Murphy. It's it straight up. White pumps it. Good kick. May not under it. They spoil it away from him. Danger. Wright nearly stole it. Ramsey gets it back. Phillips all the <laughs> way back to Reed. Needing to show some poise here, Collingwood. Short pass. Gold sack just the required. Plays on quickly. Sweeping hand pass. They should be able to bring it out towards the half back line. And well, Sam Rowe's going to intercept. The target was Hoskin Elliott, but Rowe now. Sets it up for Carlton, finding Gibbs. Thought about going short. Simpson calls for just inside the 50, but he's going to go try and get onto a tour. Almost did. Casbolt gave a nudge, an illegal nudge, says the umpire. Well, he wanted to go short, but Cripps and Murphy ran into each other. Led, led to the exact same spot. Otherwise, it would have been a, an easy target for him to hit inside 50. So Reed is called to go. And he does. A big pack almost down on the half back line. Cripps working hard for Carlton, tried to get it out, unsuccessful. Taylor Adams locks it up. White has the football, but he's going nowhere. Cruiser once again. Down towards Murphy and Gibbs. Myers have got the numbers. Adams has got the football. Short. That's going to be OK. Well, they scored their first goal with 30 seconds remaining in the first term. So it's been a long wait. For Solo was the man, and he's got it again now. He's going to be kicking from just outside 50. We mentioned his... Accuracy percentage at the MCG sitting at around 38%. But the distance will test him, so he'll just pop it up. There's some pushing and shoving. Silvani has been given the benefit of the doubt, and he has taken the defensive move. Uh, Darcy Morton has just set his feet a little bit stronger than that. Goes to half back. Casbolt again gave a bit of a shove. Bruzy, it's almost as if both teams have to get some elevation into these inside 50 kicks, giving them a chance to build some pressure. Yeah, the three-quarter kick, King, there it is there. That's oh. a better kick from Reed. That's great. Great tackle pressure. So, 
I mean, Brownie, you, you played four. You don't want that one bombed on your head, do you? Because it is hard to set your feet and go backwards. It's a lot easier to run it with that kick there. That was, I think that was Reed kicked it in. And at least you can have a run and jump, which is Darcy Moore's more natural game anyway. Exactly right. And the, and the higher it goes, Reezy, the more chance there is for a defender to hold you down and for him to have a third up supportive jumper. Jamie Elliott, just the one disposal in the first quarter. That's his career shots. So perhaps a 50-50 chance to go to the left of screen or straight through. And he's done the ladder. Elliott gets his first goal and Collingwood second. Good start in the second quarter. I think it's an area that game Collingwood have been crying out for is that tackling small forward. They haven't, they don't put a lot of pressure in their, their forward line. They do get a lot of inside 50s. Have a look at this kick here. It's a lot better kick that, as you can see, more coming out. He probably spoiled Levi <laughs> Greenwood, to be honest. But as Levi looks over his shoulder and said, what was that? But I love this from Jamie Elliott because Collingwood haven't had a lot of this forward 50 tackle pressure in the first uh, six weeks of the season. You'd expect Jamie Elliott to really, as he stick his third game back, Dwayne. Yep. You know, like you'd expect him now to get fourth. a bit of fitness in fourth game. Yep. Yeah. So the Blues, the first three goals of the game, the Magpies, the last two. Spence got it off to Graham inside 50 towards Casbolt, knocked it down. How almost too high. Kerry just tackled, deemed legal. Now Goldsack can let this run through. He could have taken it through legally there, kept it alive, maybe to his detriment. Done. Sees it out. And a good spot for a ball in for the Blues. Great part of the game, Dwayne. Keeping the ball in. It's more exciting. Insufficient intent. <laughs> Just getting my head around it still. <laughs> but I like it. Insufficient intent. Grundy, front spot. Adams. Flicked it wide. Missed for law. Danger. Outstanding tackle. Ed Kerno, no prior deem there from the umpire. Ball comes out, great, great smarter. Yeah, great smarter. As well, he was about to slip that through right. Hoskin Elliott. Good, good signs early in this quarter by Collingwood. And standing tackle there by Carlton by Ed Kerno. But good signs by Collingwood, Ruzzi, just with a couple of tackles and an yeah. important smother there. Looks like their intensity's up a little bit more than it was in the first quarter. Reed. Back into play. Chris was the target. Couldn't complete the mark. Now, the race is on. White will get there in time, but not in time before the ball goes over the line. Yeah, they certainly look better around the contest. They're getting smashed to contest the ball. I think it was minus 11 at one stage. They're now back to sort of minus 6. So they're correcting that error of their game. Grundy jostling. Just pushes Cruiser out of the way. Gibbs picks it up and goes high towards Casbolt, who's the meat in the sandwich. Reed at the bottom of the pack. They try and lock him up. Side bottom had it, but only for a moment. Hoskin Elliott, interesting little tap to try and accommodate uh, his skipper Pendlebury. Good work by side bottom as far as tackling is concerned. Petrovsky Seaton just keeps it in play, pulls it back delightfully to accommodate Gibbs. Gibbs goes short, and now they've got an opportunity through Daisy Thomas to score. And that was sufficient intent to keep it in by oh. Petrovsky Seaton, uh, Dueno. Delightful. Hey, delightful. Well, sometimes you're not sure about those kicks across the body, but if a player's got that ability and got yep. that talent, you're happy, happy to give him a bit of a leash, Ruzi. And I think because the forward had a bit of distance there, Brownie, and, and he was able to wait. The, what I don't like is the kick across the body. You try and really drill low because there's no margin for error. If you miss that kick, generally it goes down the other end of the ground for a goal to the opposition. Just the one goal for Daisy Thomas so far this season in four games. He kicks from 48 metres. And pushes it wildly to the left, and there's been a free kick, and it's going to go the way of Collingwood. Some wild pushing and shoving going on in that pack. Casbolt infringing. Again, yeah, I think that's about his third free kick against in the last uh, three minutes. Is the runner coming out to him, Ruzi, there? Lyndon Dunn yeah. kicks wide. Rowe got a fist to it. Gibbs round the body. Inside oh. 50 once again. Boy! We know what he can do. Jumping Jeremy Howe is at it again. Hoskin Elliott towards centre wing. Fasolo's got to make ground and he does. Simpson and White closing on him. Interesting kick for Dugowie. Not the sort he appreciated. Murphy kicks it in play, gives it off to White. 
who tumbles the puck back towards the centre wing, that is Varus Smith. He gives a little ground and says, the switch is on, gentlemen, so away we go. And that's what Reed does, sending it wide to the outer side. Good movement there. Phillips' is kick important here. Adams, his target. Hit him lace out, maybe just beyond his range. Calling for 50. Pokes it to the pocket, didn't work. Great commitment from March back. That's been one of Collingwood's uh, real problem areas this year, Ruzi, has it? That money kick, as we yeah. call it, that inside 50 kick. Poor option, poor kick. Taylor Adams there. Been one of the culprits throughout the season. Casbolt done. They tie up and then allow us to float in from Reed. It's like the ball might be drying out a little bit. Yeah, new ball to start the quarter, no doubt. Goldsack gets there, takes off, hands it up, side bottom. This is the moment. Went for the pass. Went for Darcy Moore. Degay around the body. They've forgiven him. <laughs> yeah, good goal. Good. Again, just that kick inside 50, Brownie, you touched on before. Probably almost their best decision maker and kick is uh, side bottom. He's streaming through the, uh, the 50 metre arc, as you can see here gets it you love ball in hand it's a terrible kick too and then a little bit fortuitous as in where the go he was but you still have to be able to put that through so the, the kick was really good he's probably just lucky to be in the right spot at the right time but side bottom nine times out of ten is going to kick that goal but yeah good finish by to go it's three in the row for the for the pies they certainly look a lot better around the footy this quarter haven't they the pies good to see him back jordan again had a great pre-season before that incident a few weeks ago where he was suspended First game back, first goal, first game for the season. Back in the middle, Trelaw's at the bottom of that pack, trying to get out. Pendlebury's there to assist, but he's going nowhere, thanks to Murphy, who's got him locked up. Still virtually in the middle. Cripps went over the top unsuccessfully. Seem to be happy now to play the six forwards ahead of the yeah, ball. Collingwood, I think, Ruzzi, I think, I think that's been adjustment. a big change, Brownie. You're right. From quarter time, they're not they're not leaving Doherty free. So there's six forwards are definitely playing forward at this stoppage now. Cox, Casbold, Simpson towards Graham takes a fine mark, edged in front of his opponent. Carlton need a steadying goal here. Kerno was the target. Petrevsky, Seaton. Could have almost had a snap, but instead popped it over the top towards Marchbank. Couldn't do anything with it. And uh, now Maynard sets up a handball. Not out of trouble yet. Cook only travelled probably eight or nine metres. But it's going the way of Collingwood, and now they're clear. Ramsey's kick goes up towards centre wing. Rowe has front spot with him there. There's Darcy Moore. Boundary line beats them both. There's definitely times in a game, too, where Carlton start to get on top. But they've still got an experienced forward line, Brownie, with Kerno and Weedering down there. So, And that's when Caswell goes in the ruck and Cruiser comes off. Their forward line looks sometimes a little bit dysfunctional because they're so young. Simpson, Pendlebury, good battle. Saw bottom had a piece of it. Pendlebury gets it back. Is to Trelaw. Collingwood has not led in this game. Threatening to take the lead now. Short pass. Wide cuts it off. Biggest margin of the game, 19 points in favour of the Blues, just seconds before quarter time. Cox read it well, flat handed it down. Bit of cleverness from the big American there. Old style footy skills in wet weather. Hands it off. Gold sack. Blast it, but blast it wide. Marchbank stalking it, ball to the back. Oh. Broomhead tucked into the boundary. Rolls it through for a behind, but they edge ever closer. One point game. Graham takes the kick in. Plays on quickly. Gives it across to Murphy, who gets it away towards Petrevsky Seaton now. He couldn't take the mark, was under plenty of pressure. Chris couldn't either for Collingwood. Side bottoms caught by Petrevsky Seaton. Is that a terrific call, Petrevsky Seaton? He has. It's been a great pick up for Carlton. Tackling a feature of his game, Browning. Definitely. Wide towards Kerno. On the half volley. Murphy to tidy up. And kick down the line. And he is found. As Lyndon Dunn 
So they once again, they had Casbolt down there. That was Smets, I think, competing against Lyndon Dunn, which 9 out of 10, Dunn's going to win that. Oh, what a fly by Taylor Adams. Into the middle he goes. Trelaw upset Pendlebury. Could have taken it. Kurnow tries to storm through. Tapped cleverly by Williamson further forward. Back to Petrevsky seaton He's in the middle of the ground now, and Carlton goes surging forward. Up towards centre half four. At the back, an opportunity. This is right again. And he is right. Gee, that was a massive blue in the middle of the ground. I don't I, I don't think Trelaw knew what was happening there. So I think the ball was meant for here. We can see here this is a great mark from Taylor Adams. Really good leap. It's gonna hit uh Pendlebury on the chest. Yeah, it was. It? It's yeah. gonna hit Pendlebury. So I think it was this kick from Adams that was gonna go straight into Pendlebury's bread basket and Trelaw just reached his hand out knocked it out of Pendlebury's hands and this is the result of it it's a really good body work there terrific body work bigger player in gold sacked and uh, a good finish Collingwood defenders were playing pretty aggressively there gold yep. was about five or ten meters in front of his man obviously not expecting a turnover in the middle of the ground Mason Cox has been talking to the doctors for a couple of minutes Trelaw breaks out of the middle might size them up from there. Goes from 60. Needs a skitter. Hits the deck. Rolls post. That would have been a monstrous reply within seconds. When he goes, he, he, you see some real pace with Traw, but he doesn't do it often enough. He has got some real power and speed out of stoppages. Yeah, well, Kingy mentioned a couple of weeks ago on the couch and then saw Adam Trelaw in it. In, uh, during the weekend, Adam agreed with Kingy there. So that's obviously a focus for Adam to really burst out of those stoppages. Crips to the Halls Creek Cowboy. Bull riding champion as a 14 year old Petreski Seaton. Turned his hand to footy and he's become a star for the Blues early in his career. Colonel up early. Charlie couldn't bring it down. Lyndon Dunn didn't quite work the first time, it worked the second time. Ramsey out wide. Green under pressure. Carriage wrapped him up. Back to Ramsey. Twists out of trouble. Back into trouble. Thomas, hands free. Here's a decrypts. Nothing forward. Goes back. Shows some poise. March bank. A bomb. Graham's ball if he can get it. Caused the spillage. Got it away from Howe. Stopped him from marking it. Gold sack season knocked away. Spence put his body on the line. Howe got up quick. Gave it to Adams. Games picked up in pace. Straight down the middle to Grundy. For Solos, the one-on-one. -on -one. He hands it over to Elliott. Horrible handball. Silvani barreled him over. Not illegal. Cruiser gets his arms free. Charlie Kerno back to Silvani. Blues get a chance. Graham forward. Flicked away by Dunn. Smets caught. Petreski Seaton caught. Gang tackled. Kerno tries to tow it out. Grundy. Pendlebury. Trelaw. Nothing forward. Had to go wide. Crisp, rolling ball, Cripps, Crisp, say that ten times to get away with it. Knocked away towards side bottom. Got it off, Broomhead, little fumble. Caught again. Game certainly gone up a gear. Side bottom, just inside the boundary. Almost content to see it out. They're out in their feet down here, boys. They're out in their feet. You can see Mason Cox has just made his way to the bench. Rolled that left ankle there in a market contest with Levi Casbolt still getting some attention. Casbolt back on now. He's been off for quite a big period, Rusey. Yeah, he has. It's affected their forward line, definitely. Cruiser. Gibbs may have to go again. Carriage close to the line and over. It was just a matter of time before Crisp was tackled by Cripps. And I'm glad you're in the driver's seat, Dwayne. Ball on centre wing, just forward. Collingwood, 3-5. Carlton, 4-5. Straight kick in at Trelaw. Busy again to Pendlebury. Just going across the ground. Dugowie and Smith will give chase for Collingwood. It's the former who picks it up now. Virtually guides it onto the boot. And, uh, good strong mark taken by Doherty. Gets it off to Simpson. Ball to ground once. Has a look downfield. They can mount something here as players start streaming back. Simpson follows play down. Gets the hand pass away in towards Petrevsky seat and he doesn't let them down. My word, he's having a standout game at the moment, this young man. Yeah, absolutely. He's up to 10 possessions. He's his 11th. Um, Coming out for his 7th disposal this quarter. quarter. Yeah. Yep. The chance for his second goal. And the opportunity to stretch Carlton's lead to 12 points. Remember at one stage they did lead by 19. 
directly in front. Kicks from 46 metres. Looks pretty good off the boot. It's perfect. Petrovsky Seaton has his second. And Carlton have just had the last couple of answers. You'd have to be the only bull rider to, in AFL history, would you? I'll tell you what, he's made a good career choice. He... <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> It's it's not, not a lot of money in bull riding, is it? Well, not in Australia, probably no, not. not. In Australia, a little bit safer out here too. Mate. He's got a um, <laughs> got a really all round game though, Brownie. Has he? he, he inside, outside, and he tackles really well, which is can sometimes be unusual for young kids coming into AFL I football. Think that, that's the biggest standout for mine, Rosie. Yeah, it, it is that all round game, and obviously a strong mark. His ground level presence is is good um, on the radar of a lot of clubs. Obviously, uh, they think he's a real excitement machine. That's for sure. He's enjoying the big stage, yet to get a nomination for the NAB Rising Star this year. Samo, as he likes to be known after his grandfather, Samo petrevsky seaton Petrovsky bit Yugoslavian grandfather, and all the siblings named after which family member they look like. So <laughs> little sister Angel is just named Petrevsky because she looks like the Petrovsky side of the family. And here he is on cue. That's outstanding. Takes a little pass. Murphy back to Cruiser. Out wide to Marchbank. Here he is again, running riot, goes to Daisy Thomas. He pokes the pass to the pocket, and we know Wright can kick a goal. What he's doing well, Petrescu, Seaton's getting up in the midfield ground, and he's sort of losing his direct opponent. So he looks like a really smart kid, reads the play well, and he's getting free a number of times. Collingwood got to within a point. And yet this kick, stretch it back to 18. Almost to a hush here. Majority Collingwood fans in. Sprays it to the right. Never a chance. And the Magpies dodge a bullet. Jeremy Howe will bring it back into play. Heads to the outer side. It's going to be okay. Opportunity now for Hoskin Elliott. Towards for Solo, who's got to beat a couple here. It's fisted down. Still a chance for Grundy. Still an opportunity for Collingwood. Clever little tap. Finds Greenwood off to Smith. He's getting calls from the middle of the ground, but he elects to go down the line. And that's a poor option because Markbeck is there. And he takes a timely mark at the fence. Goes back to Doherty. Who spears a worm burning pass to Murphy. Another one finds a teammate there. In Plowman. Plowman to Petrovsky seat. They love these short kicks, Carl. Several players in the top hand for uh, the league. They, they, they don't know. always love them, yeah. Brownie. Have a look at that one. But he makes amends, he affects the spoil, and he goes again, Petrovsky seat. Collingwood should get it away through Greenwood, and he does off to Crisp. Drop putt, Simpson's in front, it bounces off his chest. Now he needs support, and he gets it. Wide towards Doherty. Takes a timely mark, it might get 50 metres for his trouble. Because that was another poor entry inside 50. Elliot was by himself, an easy kick, and they chose to go the harder kick where Simpson impacted the contest. So it's certainly an area that Bucks would want to talk about at half time. Petrovsky Seaton off for a spell. And a much needed one, too. Doherty. <sighs> Switches play going right across the ground to Simpson. Thinks about Plowman, but then to go straight down the middle and finds Marchbank. Marchbank is told to move it on, so he does. He goes long. Cruiser forced to defend from behind. Carries it down in front. Murphy, a little left foot snap, but it only goes as far as Lyndon Dunn. You need to go there early. Top of the goal square, they've got Cruiser and Casbolt. Carlton players need to. They'll be more positive with their ball movement there, especially in these uh, wetter conditions. Plowman, good fist, no, free kick. Big two and a half minutes coming up here to half time. Blues have the momentum. Collingwood struck back late and went in a quarter time with some momentum back their way. They could do that again here at the half. Good attack, Elliot. And it's building. Moore's forward in a one on one. Needs to be a big bomb to get there. He's Squeezes it wide to going. Still Darcy Moore screaming for it with Rowe. 
Greenwood's at their feet. It's in Moore's direction. He's up. He's got it. Thought he held it. Had the first purchase. Up I said no. Gibbs. Caught. Could have been ball. No free to Broomhead. Collingwood fans screaming at the moment. Seconds continue to roll. Casbol knocks it down. Reed. Adams. Trelaw. He's got Maynard out wide. He sees him. He's got Phillips by hand if he wants him. Ignores it and turns it over. Disaster. March back. Another, another poor entry over and over and over again. It's uh, been a pattern of the first half of the pies. March bank from the back pocket towards Doherty, who's got to beat a couple here. What it is, Ruzi, it's frustrating for Nathan Buckley, but it's more frustrating for the forwards yeah. because they start to lack confidence in their teammates up the field. So their leading patterns are, are not, as, uh, not as strong and not as... Uh, yeah, I right, suppose they don't lead with as much conviction, I think. Yeah, you lead with speed when you know the ball's going to get there really nicely. And then, you're right, you start to waver. It's going to be a big dis discussion point, Sandy, at half time. Adams over the back to go. He won't keep it in play. To Law and Cripps having a little how do you do behind play. And I think, uh, you know, Darcy Moore has caught criticisms at, at times uh, for his forward play. Uh, he's incredibly tough for a young forward on the end of those yeah, kicks. Absolutely. Grundy looking to hold front spot, but Cruiser gets in front, then has a fresh air shot. It comes back to Grundy again. He wobbles a short one, not a lot of distance in it. Gibbs is out wide. The high ball back towards Reed, who juggles it on the chest. And I think it will say, I've touched on a couple of times, but you can see the difference in Carlton's form and when Casbolt's not there. So we've spoken about it with Darcy Moore. He hasn't got a, a player at all. 120 minutes of the game, an experienced big body like Casbolt. Oh, oh Huskin Elliott tackle. gets caught. What a ripping tackle. And there may be time for Carlton yet. Kerno goes in towards right. He takes the mark. Wiedering's in the square almost. He plays on and he gets the goal. Four seconds remaining in the second term. That's what Collingwood did in the first. Oh, yeah, well, I'll tell you what, uh, Nathan Buckley frustrated there. Probably frustrated with Howe, who ran forward. He didn't need to come forward, so we obviously see the turnover. It's, it's a really bad one here. A bit of fumbling, good tackling effort there by Silver Silvani. There's that speed again. But look at Howe come forward. Didn't need to come forward. Left, right, on his own over, over the top. That's a bad mistake. Uh, from the defender there, Ruzzi. Yeah, make the guy that's 70 metres out make a decision. You're absolutely right. All of a sudden, it's a it's a 50 metre drop kick, for, drop punt for goal, as opposed to Weedering running in and kicking one from three metres out. Yeah, bad mistake by Howe there. He'll rue that one. An 18 point margin on half time. So Collingwood challenged. Carlton has answered. Late goals to Petrevsky, Seaton, Wietering and Wright. It's half time here at the MCG, round seven. And what a rival this is. 80 points is the margin favouring the Blues. It's damaging because he's always in tight. He's had a pretty good year this year, Ruzi, um, Mark Murphy. Yeah, no, he has. He's been really consistent. It's crisp going towards Cripps. So, set to go in the second half. Trelaw's got him at the moment. Here's Cruiser and Grundy. One by the latter. Gibbs couldn't take it away initially. Did have the opportunity. It's still in the middle and it's going nowhere. I just following up from Kingy's comment as well. I think when you're playing an extra midfielder from your half forward line, you can overpossess the ball without going forward. I'd like to see Collingwood keep six in front of the ball, which it looks like they're going to do their Kingy. So I think that's going to help their ball movement. Grundy taken to ground. Eventually Trelaw gets it out the side bottom. Sweeps it wide. Toko accommodates Maynard. Down towards full forward, but chopped off once again. And Silvani doing a by, fine job. Yeah, good courage there by yep. Silvani. Does some big jobs on players. Kept Tex Walker to one goal last year. Yeah, Franklin the, two last week. Zero last week, was it? One, I think. One, was it? One, yeah. And uh, the defence of Carlton doing extremely well today at the moment, limiting Collingwood to just three goals in the first half. Fine grab and courage by Silvani. So throw in once again, almost down to centre wing. Cruiser got a right hand to it. Gibbs was deep and able to go to his good mate Murphy. 
and flicks it round the body with his 20th disposal. Up towards centre wing, kept in by Kerner off to Petrevsky Seaton, who had a boom second quarter. Kick's got to be good, and it is. Wright takes the mark. One of a couple of multiple scorers so far. Wright's got two goals. A good follow up to his four last week. He goes deep into attack, up towards Casbol. Couldn't complete the mark. Reed gets the hand pass to Pendlebury, and away they go. Out of trouble goes Crisp. His hand pass was interesting, held it for a long time. Now he may have a problem. Carlton have got the numbers. Simpson's got the football. Not sure which way to go. He did get a second opportunity. Kerno trying to help out. So too Plowman. And there's going to be a free kick for a throw. And it's going to go the way of Carlton. Plowman's got it. Middle of the ground. Again, he wants to go the dangerous kick to the middle to set it up. Gibbs to White. And it opens up for the Blues now. The leads come. Tresky Seaton was short. Casbolt's longer. Charlie Kerno's the longest. So he puts it up for the leap. Charlie sets himself. Casbolt sets himself. Cripps nearly had the chance to grab and go. He's just joined us. 19 points, the biggest margin of the game. In favour of the Blues just before quarter time. But the Cruiser pulls it out of the air. Magpies have not led in this game. That rolls across the face. Yeah, no All one, in. No one thought of the ball there. So Matty Cruiser takes the rucks in Carlton's forward 50. Levi Casbolt goes behind the football. Just to help set up that ball for Carlton. Keep it into their, in their forward half. Cruiser stalking Grundy from behind. Grundy got the knockdown hit Kerno. Oscar Elliott almost run down. Great smother. Ball in a good spot for Charlie Kerno. He can collect. Took a couple of goes. Gave it to Doherty. Uses it well normally. Graham. It was the required 15. And he can spank a ball. He can kick it from here. Pretty good today, Nick Graham, too. Back in the side last week. Well done there by Carlton. They were really well organised behind the football. Car Collingwood got the break out of that stoppage, but Carlton were really well set up and they blocked all the exits. Great smother by Smith. Yeah, it was good, good pressure, wasn't it? There's been some good smothers by the Carlton players today. Yeah, Smith's playing for his footy life every time he runs out there at the moment to stay in this lineup. All eyes on Graham from 49. Kept it low. Sneaks it in. Big goal. Big, big goal in the context of this game to lead by four early in the third term. And you see here, it's terrific effort there. That's great smother. And that keeps the ball in. Kerno picks it up, handballs it. Great awareness. I think it was Doherty. Here it is. Nice little kick inside 50. And Nick Graham is a prolific ball winner at VFL level. I've seen him play a lot uh, for the VFL team. He, he knocks up getting to the football there. So, look, he's, he's just one of those guys that hasn't been able to cement himself at AFL level. But what you see of him, you, you really like. He's got a good inside and an outside game. 13 disposals today. Right on there by Billy Smith. The biggest lead in the game so far, and it belongs to Carlton. Collingwood, desperate for a fourth goal. Grundy leaves it. For Dugowie, gets a hurried kick, under pressure, not a lot of distance in it. Taylor Adams couldn't complete the mark. He was under great pressure. He applies a good tackle. Ball spills free. It was thrown, said the umpire. So Adams has got the benefit of a free kick. Collingwood to go deep into attack. Every player in the pie's half of the ground. Cox was at the back. Silvani fell and attempted soccer off the ground. Plowman initiated it. Opportunity now for Williamson under the puck. Boundary line wins and we've got to throw in. In Collingwood's left forward pocket. They trail 7-5 to 3-5. Five, five and a half gone in this third turn. Big pack around it. Ekerno running with Pendlebury for the ball in. Cruiser, Grundy. Flick down towards Murphy. Trying to slide a handball through traffic. Simpson likewise with a kick. Cripps got it out, thumped away. Greenwood tried to shake the tackle. Ball. No oh. holding the man. Well, he didn't have prior, so it was always going to be hard to pay ball, but he got the benefit of a 50-50 there. 
You'd need to see it again, wouldn't we? It was. He must it, have handballed that yeah, to the ground. I reckon he must have. There it is. Gee. Oh, he just sort of dropped it. Mm. <laughs> Handball wasn't deemed a handball seconds ago. Got Colling with the inside 50. Now to finish it off. Carlton fans enjoyed that. It was a pass to Daisy Thomas. <laughs> Kerridge answering every challenge the Blues at the moment. Thomas, not your kick guy though. Does miss a few targets. Goes for distance. Reed stalks it. Cripps got a hand on it. Push. Free kick. Carlton can play on to advantage here. Yeah. Uh, they're not allowed. So it's calling it's free kick, I think. OK, yeah, pointed the wrong way. He did. Yeah, the umpire pointed the wrong yeah. way. The Blues players took off. And he changed his mind. Nice disposal winner for Collingwood. Ben Reid up for his 19th disposal. Almost a puck to going. Well, a little bit of luck. That's what you need. Get yourself back into the contest. And this guy probably needs more luck than anybody after the start to his year. No need to tell you the story again. Already got one back into the lineup, missed the first six, and this is huge. Looks good. Collingwood fans find voice again. Yeah, good to see there. Great to see him back in. Just see him in the top of the goal screen. Look, Rusey, I'm, 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 I'm happy with this, Rusey. Here's to go here. I'm happy with this. Even numbers ahead of the ball. Kick the ball in long. Let's watch the go. He could mark by an undersized, an undersized forward. He's still probably about six foot two. Good body work there. Yeah, He's able to work uh, Silvani to his left. Good strong mark and a good finish. Kick through the ball. Lent forward. Copped a little bit there from Daisy Thomas, but he had the last laugh. We've been singing Silvani the praise, but how often does a key defender get on a non-key forward, lose concentration? Yeah. And we saw that there with Silvani. He's been able to spoil all the bigs down there. All of a sudden, you get a medium size, he gets outmarked. So back to the half-time break. Grundy out of the middle. Just wobbles it down towards half-forward. Carlton should be first to it. Through Marchbank, gives it to Thomas. He's under pressure, gets it across to White who tumbles a high punt kick up towards the half-forward line. Kerno got a hand to it, couldn't complete the mark. Levi runs into trouble. Hard to drop Kasbolt, but he did on that occasion. Petrevsky seaton tries to get it back to Levi, who's again taken to ground. Clear. And we've got to stop it. What a junkyard dog, Levi Greenwood, that's for sure. Have a look at this. Bang! Oh, not, not many players can handle that, but he did that well. Well, he had prior there, didn't five he? steps, yeah. and then put the ball on the ground for a try, and we're not playing rugby league, That's so... Weird. I'm not sure how that can't be a free kick. The clash of the Levi's. I saw last night, too, they let a few go that probably should have been holding the ball. I think they've maybe relaxed it this weekend, Ruzi, from the holding the balls. Yeah, look at his heart. I mean, definitely. It's difficult for the umpires, but uh, I thought that was a free kick to Greenwood. Grundy does well towards Maynard. Now Thomas. Hand pass out the back towards Murphy, who's got Petrevsky's seat. Who's uh, going to do a 360. Didn't know where to go. Eventually over to Kasbold, who gave it to Marchbank, who tumbles a little left footer that spins away, and it will be thrown in. Good time, Petrevsky seat, hasn't he? Yeah, he navigates his way through... Yeah. Uh, Look at a lot, lot of the indigenous boys, you, you never knew whether you should tackle them or stay off them and corral them, but just because they're so skillful, they can turn on a dime. So Grundy and Casbolt again. Casbolt comes from the side. And he wins himself a free. I think this is the difference here, Ruzi, in the game right now. Forward 50 targets. It's eight marks to two inside yeah. the forward 50 because they've got the bona fide targets, Carl. Sits it up, cruises down there. Howe from behind. Charlie Kerno! Good time to stay down. Yeah, good work there by Kerno. Exciting young player for Carlton. Look, we've seen the last uh, two goals, one from Collingwood, one from Carlton, Ruzzi. We like to see this, just kick the ball along towards the top of the goal square. The conditions are slippery, they're going to be slippery for the majority of the day. If you've got even numbers, just drive it in there. I think for me, I think King hit the nail on the head as well a bit though. Like, 
Carlton have got to cruise a Kaz Bolt there that's going to compete every single time. The problem down the other end, if you launch it in, Moore's more of a runner, leader, jumper. Mason Cox is very young in terms of the game as well. So there's a definite advantage when you go into Carlton's forward line because you know you're getting a contest. First goal to Charlie Kerno as the Blues once again out to a 24-point advantage. Casbolt having a run on the ball. Almost thrown out with the one hand. Kerno there couldn't take it cleanly. Now there's a problem. Clever work by Kerridge to give it to Gibbs, who goes to the outer side wanting Murphy. He was taken to the ground, he didn't have the football, and he's got the free kick. I tell you, Murphy's enjoying not having Levi Greenwood uh, run with him. I just don't understand with Collingwood's preparation. They've absolutely um, got the better of Selwood last week, and they've let a midfielder run around and at this stage at 23. Yeah, yes, yeah, goes towards Casbolt, right. Pulls it back in towards the square. Almost a mark. <laughs> and eventually it's Smith who sees it over the line. Right forward pocket throw in. Kuno boys and everything at the moment. Charlie and Ed. Dangerous times for Collingwood. Down by four goals. Deep in Carlton's attacking zone. Casbolt using his weight. You'll find Kerridge somewhere down there, along with Kerno. They both pick themselves up, as does Crisp, who's playing his 57th straight game. Fine achievement. Kerno, Petrovsky, Seaton, clever little give. Now they lead by five. How's that? That's Big how, Levi. That's how well his goal kicking is, Sandy. <laughs> He's now slotting left foot snaps from uh, stoppage. So, and, and I think I said earlier in the game, the stoppages can be really important. Obviously, it's right out a bit, particularly in the wet, though. Just a scramble ball, little handball. Petrovsky Seaton involved again, who's having an absolute... And you're talking about that time and space, Brown. He just had ability to make a decision under pressure there. Score review there. Maybe touch. They're going to go back and have a look at this. It's a good kick by Levi. I'd be disappointed if he got this taken off him, especially the big man. Ruckman don't kick many like that. Ruckman forward. I love their movement. I'm really liking Carlton's movement around the stoppages. They're forming for a kick in here. Yeah. Maybe Looks like touched. the players are conceding it was touched. It's far too honest. Players of today, yep. far too honest. <laughs> Didn't own up to it, did he? Ooh. Oh, I don't know whether he can... I reckon they might have to go back to the centre. Can you overall on that? No way. Not on that one, you can't. It might be a different angle, but... It's a goal. It's a goal. Yep. I've yep. used the scoreboard to show the fans at the same time. <laughs> you heard it first at home. I was going to say, they must be like, they must have lost contact between the score reviewers and, and the, the scoreboard. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Bruce, but I'll tell you what, they're on the ropes right now. Lots of thoughts, Twain, about having 40 seconds off, and because of the goal kicker, you still have to come off after the review. <laughs> <laughs> interesting to watch, Key, though, the next, uh, how long Casbolt's off for, because Carlton certainly lost structure in that second quarter, and Casbolt was off for what seemed like close to 10 minutes, and they really. Uh, yeah. Look like they fell apart, so we might. This should be a short break for Casbolt. Mason Cox back in the ruck after that ankle problem in the first half. Petrescu seating off the deck. Wiener in court, dumped, gone. Dropped it, holding the ball. Cohen would need a hero from somewhere. Elliot drives it long. Grundy resting forward for solos there, and he marks it. Good strong hands. Turns. He wants an option. Bangs it long in hope. Thomas about to jump. Got it. And he hits a target. Gibbs can go. Turns inside. Wobbles one to Graham, but it might work. They are out here. Charlie Kerno's out wider. He's got the longer option, Wienering. Hands it to Ed. Spence. Uh -oh. Carriage. Oh, he didn't know. Goldsack crept up behind him. Dragged him down. No prior, yeah. according to the umpire. No awareness. That was yeah. short. Gee, ball up. It's a terrific kick by Bryce Gibbs, wasn't it? Yeah, they've wrecked the center of the ground. They've wrecked Collingwood celebration count on the 25th anniversary, the 50th, the 75th, and the 100th, and they're threatening to wreck it here. 
for the 125th. Cruiser on the wing, about to pump them inside 50 again. The big man looks downfield and decides to go long. Inside 50. Cripps got a hand to it. That was all. Interesting Grundy's gone forward, which I don't think is a bad move, Brownie, too, because they just haven't had that big, powerful guy that could stand under a ball that Carlton have had down the other end with Cruiser and uh, and Casbol. Cox and Cruiser again. Cripps going past, just couldn't quite get a hand to it. Trelaw's in trouble at the bottom of the pack. He threw it out to Adams, who gave it away to Smith. Now side bottom. They're trying to desperately get out of strife here through Ramsey. Greenwood. Is that halfback tucked on the boundary line? Will he go inboard or will he go down the line? It's the latter. That's going to be okay. Mark taken by Crisp. He goes inboard to accommodate Smith. Looking to go laterally. Uh, well, in the end, he goes backwards. But that's going to be okay. Maynard's away to the outer side and Howe. Jeremy Howe. Uh, one of the game's big leapers, but sometimes not one of the game's best kicks. They will get out of trouble, though. They go down towards Big Cox, who takes the mark. And now an opportunity for Collingwood to start to close the gap. They're down by five goals. It was a good decision. Cox was uh, over the back there. It's a nice long kick with good elevation. Identified there was one up, one on one ahead of the football. You don't mind that there, Ruzi. I love like the kick. I think you touched yeah. on. I love the kick because it had enough height to get over Cruz's head. Cox has kicked just the one goal so far this season, and he's into his fourth game at senior level this year. Should not miss from 15 metres and hasn't. Good finish there. His, his goal kicking is actually not too bad uh, for, for an American that's just new to the game. But yeah, good long high ball coming in there. Bit of a slow build up. It's been Collingwood's problem today. Uh, look at that kick was uh, trop, chopped off, but Collingwood able to win the ball back. A good tackle there by Phillips and drove it in long. Good decision by Ramsey to get it in long to Mason Cox. Completed the mark. Also, a bit of a romance brewing down at the Holden Centre as well, Sandy, with Mason Cox going out with Shani Layton. Of course, the uh, Collingwood oh. star netballer. So, uh, it's under the one roof they do train, so... You're the man for all the news, oh, aren't you, Brownie? There you go, eh? So, it hasn't <laughs> taken him long, the big American. With you doing that and Dwayne doing family <laughs> trees and the Petrescu <laughs> seats, we've got yeah. everything. You get it all on Fox Footy. <laughs> Ball high inside 50. Collingwood kicked three in a row in the second term to tie the scores up. They've got some momentum here. Elliot breaks free. That was almost a throw to Trelaw. Bends it across the face. Cox can't get near it. And it's on the full. It did look a lot throwish from here. I tell you, I would rather have the shot too. It was Jamie Elliott, not Adam Trelaw. So. Mm. Mm. 8.32 left in the third. Big crowd. 70,000 odd. Celebration game for the Magpies. And you can sense they might be on the march back. Pendlebury flicks it out. Crisp. Broomhead, Smith, pumps it back to attacking 50. Cox attacks it hard. Hits the deck to Goey, opens it up, wanted to law, almost got it too high. Plowman wraps him up. Baller. That's, that's terrific by Cox. That's the stuff they've missed. He's taken one mark now, really nice kick coming in. He's crashed that next pack. Look at the difference. You crash your pack, bring the ball to ground, and you get a stoppage in your forward 50. That's playing with presence, Ruzzi, and as a key forward, don't always have to take the mark. Grundy, Cruiser, almost a Falcon from the Carlton man. Simpson, round the body, uses the right foot. Good strong mark taken by Lyndon Dunn. Straight back into the danger zone again. Sam Rowe with the meat in the sandwich. Carlton have got the numbers here. March back, picks it up now. Picks up another disposal, but under pressure in the end, he kicks with the left boot and puts it out of bounds on the ball. They've lifted in the pies the last five minutes. They sense the danger on the scoreboard. They've definitely lifted. They're back into the game. Carlton are just hanging on here, struggling to get out of their defensive half. A crucial seven minutes in this game. 
kick is long. It's inside 50 once again from Ramsey. Well done by Silvani off to Simpson. Doesn't get onto that left leg, but it instead penetrating hand pass to accommodate Graham. Off to Kerno. That's Ed. To centre wing. Now they've got the run. Cripps. Once he got downfield, Kerno is lurking. Kick's got to be good. And it is. Gibbs is alone. Jesus. He's going to go back. To have a shot. Kicks handy. Wasn't it? just perfect. A fingernail over the top. That's the difference. It's targets at one end yeah. versus no targets at the other. Carlton intercept mark and counter attack at will. And this to really hurt Collingwood after they tried so hard. Well, he's given it to Simpson, who'll go onto that left boot, but he just pops it up to the top. Casbolt's a man, and he's got it. There's a great block in behind there, Sandy. I, I, I couldn't pick up exactly who that Carlton player was, but that's why the Collingwood guys are going. Pendles is going off his nut there to the umpire, and he probably has got an argument, but let's give credit to the Collingwood player. We'll see it on the replay after Casbolt. We put the moz on him and say he kicked the goal or <laughs> one so far earlier in this quarter. 35 out. Not a problem for the new Levi Caswell. So all the Collingwood defenders set up. They probably think the ball is gonna drop right here. This is the hot spot. Levi Casbolt out here. Collingwood defenders caught unawares. We see this long ball go in. They've had to scramble late, the defenders. They couldn't get to Casbolt. And look, in a one-on-one -on -one contest, he's never going to drop that. He's got the best hands in the business, bar none. And now, one of the most accurate goal kickers in the competition, Sandy. I never, would, never thought we'd be saying those words. And that was Daisy Thomas too, Brownie, just off screen there. Look, he actually... He did, um, did a really good job of not giving away a free kick, I'm trying to say. I'll get yeah. that out eventually, yes. Sandy. Um, little bump, but not an overly aggressive bump. Six minutes left, third quarter. I'm in and back the Blues way. Grundy. Cruiser. Worked his way to the front. Flicked to Cripps. To half forward. Maynard ties up with right. Gibbs. Well, he oh. rode that bump to perfection. Takes off and drills it. <laughs> Awesome. That's Harlem Globe trying to stuff. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that was. <laughs> he thought his way through that gives unbelievably well. Cruiser involved again. Here it is here. Tap down, quick kick. Ball hits the deck. Cruiser follows up. Here it is here. Jeez, oh, there. Taylor awesome. Adams. Now you see it. Now you don't. He's thinking. Because there's been a number of free kicks with guys getting rid of the ball and sort of slinging them down after. It's great effort by Cruiser to follow up firstly and then Gibbs to finish off with a nice goal. It's real strength is in Cruiser's follow up. And yeah. Bryce Gibbs only 13 disposals, but every time he gets, he uses the ball, Ruzi. Yeah, he does. Perfect time for this rain to come for Carlton. It's absolutely boring. Pendleby's free kick. He tumbles it up towards Elliott, who takes a strong contested mark. Six goals the margin. Just over one quarter remaining. And Collingwood's only managed five goals in almost three quarters. Jamie Elliott kicked the goal in the second quarter. In his fourth game back. He's got five so far this season. Kicking from 51 metres. He's going to make the distance. It's a good-looking kick and a good answer. Carlton clings to Carl Collingwood clings to Carlton's coattails, I should say. 6-5, plays 11-5, and we played 25 and a half minutes in the third term. Yeah, look at the kick here by Pendlebury. Probably just fell short, really. Yeah. I was going to give him a bit more credit for the kick, <laughs> yes. but I reckon he tried to overkick it and it dropped short, so... One of the few times we've got a one-on-one -on -one contest to a forwards advantage, but it was probably half a miss kick from Pendlebury. But you see Jamie Elliott, he's starting to get you know, a bit of fitness under his belt. You see how dangerous he is. 
He's going to really build into the season. Just going to need some special acts now from the Collingwood players to get back into this. Acts like that, individual efforts. Cruiser, nice palm, but missed his target. Adams, a one tooth with Trelaw. How squeezed it wide. Elliot yeah. having an impact. Can he hit a target? Looks up, heads to the top of the square. Missed his target, and Doggerty. He just keeps on keeping on. Bad decision, I think, Rosie. Yeah, well, trying to go in board, just hit up the obvious, hit up Darcy Moore, or maybe have a long shot at goal. Williamson got some young players in this Blues lineup. Collingwood needs to put some doubt in their mind. It's a lot younger than the Collingwood team, Carlton. Gibbs goes back, Simpson, but the old heads are combining well. Ed Kerno showing some poise. Cripps found some width. I think one of those old heads, uh, Daisy Thomas. Dale Thomas been pretty good at, yeah. against his old team. 15 disposals now. Well, he had 30 possessions last week in the twos. Yeah. was best on ground. They had to reward him. They said it wasn't because they were playing Collingwood. Just through form. Oh. Danger here. Greenwood. Got it. Plowman got him. Ramsey put his head down. Threw it back. Pendlebury. Oh. A fumble from the captain. Reed just pumps it back in hope. Crisp, early leap on Cripps. Messed it up completely. Three blues over there. Murphy, Thomas, faked. Back to Cripps, faked. Back to Thomas. Oh, they're messing with them right now. Cripps along the tight rope, the boundary oh. line to perfection. And oh. taken out by Maynard Cook. Finally, they get the turnover. Three minutes left in the quarter. It's just, it, it, he got tired there, Cripps. I think he ran about 50 <laughs> metres. It was a bad decision in the end after some really good decision making from four or five Carlton players. Just uh, need to get it on, need to kick it after two or three handballs and get it forward. Just over three minutes for Collingwood to try and add to the scoreboard. Taylor Adams on centre wing. Poor kick once again, just cutting across. And Charlie Kerno takes an uncontested mark. Well, wouldn't the Carlton supporters be excited about this man, Charlie Kerno? It's going to be a star of the future, no doubt about it. He's a, well, not another star. Or well, this bug is another he star. Is. Not a star of the future, he's a star right now. Patrick Cripps. Up towards the 50. Fisted clear, gold sack. His hand pass may be all right for Pendlebury in the end. He finds Trelaw, who dashes through the middle. He's had two bounces. Then goes long. Rocks for Solo. White is right there with him. White leads in the race. Got a hand to it. And one rush behind. Eleven five. Plays six goals, six. And the rain threatening to fall again. And intermittent showers throughout the day. Uh, that was meant for Plowman. Poor disposal. And it opens the door once again for Collingwood and Jamie Elliott. He struggled when he kicked from this distance early in the quarter. Uh, he wants to try and play on, and he does. He goes short, but uh, Kerno got hands to it. And he may be able to come away with it. He does. He tumbles a puck straight down the throat of Hoskin Elliott. Oh, he goes short and turn. Almost requiring Benny Hill music in these 30 seconds as the ball will finish over the line. But precious seconds oh, tick over. No, 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 no. In this. Insufficient intent. Oh. He actually looked, I saw him look, his eyes were, he saw two Carlton players ahead of him and actually tried to tumble punt to him. Ramsey, back over the 50 once again. March back, standing firm. Yeah. Another intercept mark for March Bank. He's been good at that since he's come across the Carlton. Wittering hasn't seen a lot of it. Gets a good kick towards Gibbs here. Bounced unkindly for him, but they've got the numbers. Kerno slipped, though. Gibbs flicks it out. Doherty, a bounce pass to Smets. Didn't really have it, but wasn't yeah. tackled either. Wittering flicks oh. it out. Was looking for Cruiser. Grundy almost bit off more than he could chew. Pumps bounce. it. Rowe, ugly bounce. Degoe, beautiful bounce for Solo. Needs to show some poise. Dances to 50, pokes the pass, Elliot. And the Collingwood Army roar. 
hard work of it, Marusi, but at least one of those money kicks finally hits its target. Yeah. Jamie Elliott's had a big five or six minutes, hasn't he? He's looked very dangerous. He's on the move in the Collingwood forward line. Well, no real need to tell you. As those seconds tick down to three-quarter time, 42 to 71, this is massive. To put some doubt in the Blues' minds. They're heading to three-quarter time with some confidence. It's drifting. He's got a monster there. He's got three. Look, Sam Rowe was a little bit unlucky, too. He was sort of took good position. There was a scrubby kick. I think it was Reed kicked it out. And it bounced over the top to get the goey there. It was actually behind his man. And then this is good awareness, good decision-making, and probably the area of the game that's been poor for Collingwood has been their kick inside 50. So that was really well done by Fasola. And certainly Elliott's looked the, the most likely one to, to light up that forward line. But he's going to need some more delivery like that. And Collingwood, uh, Carl McCoy players back... Carl McCoy players back now behind the ball. Obviously, only 22 seconds to go. Looks like they've got about eight defenders trying to block it out. Block. I don't want another score against him here. Cruiser wins it. Kerno goes long towards half forward. Collingwood with the numbers. Defending. How short? Pendlebury. Is that half back? And probably won't even take a kick because the siren will sound. He does, just gives it back to half. It's three quarter time. The equation, a simple one for Collingwood. They need early goals in the final quarter if they're going to really celebrate their 125th anniversary tonight. It's three quarter time. Carlton 11 5, 71. Collingwood are 7 6, 48. Can they get their skates on? to Goey for Solo. They don't offer the same predictability for crumbing at ground level. 16 ground ball gets in the Carlton forward 50 to 6 in the Collingwood forward 50. It's predictability, Ruzi, that's giving them a chance to score. Yeah, no, absolutely. They just look more dangerous when they go forward because of the, the contest that the bigs are given and, as you said, the crummers down there. Free kick paid in the middle. The Blues will get it away. Cruiser. Collingwood kicked the last two goals of the game. The last... Two goals of the third term. Cruiser pumps it. Casbolt under it. How had a big piece of it, then almost crumbed it. Petrevsky Seaton having a day out, rolls it towards the goal. And misses only a behind, but they're not done yet. The Magpies, they were 36 down, edging their way back slowly late in that third quarter. 20 disposals for Petrevsky Seaton. So he's certainly done his job. Moore is a long way from home. First kick. Yeah, two handballs only. Quiet day for the young man. Down towards uh, half forward. And that's as far as they'll go. The target was Hoskin Elliott. Back to centre wing. Simpson. In game number 271. What a servant he has been. Murphy to the outer side. Graham. Slow to move. Now away. Daisy Thomas. I think he'd be happy, Rosie, with his form today. Yeah, I think he's been really solid. He's done some terrific things and had a pretty consistent game. Danger signs are up once again for Collingwood. Kerno, Simpson had it, but then lost it. Now Kerno tries to retrieve it. Taylor Adams has got him, and he's going nowhere. In fact, uh, he will be going somewhere because he's got a free kick. And he wastes no time. Skipping in towards the middle of the ground. Smith gets a kind bounce, sneaks away from Petrevsky seaton Up towards Greenwood, and Levi takes the mark outside 50. Collingwood desperate for an early goal. But a fine grab. Just got to keep going there, Ruzi. Levi Greenwood, he's on his left foot, needs to keep going. I just think Collingwood, they stop a little bit too much and doubt themselves. Sam Rowe from the back pocket. Cox will be the fly, but he spoils from behind or at least attempts to. Cruiser lays a good tackle. Ball not coming out and another stoppage. Just gives the opposition defence 
a second or two to settle the Ruzy. And he's not, I think they've got an unusual forward line, Brown, haven't they? I mean, Green yeah. was tagging Selwood last week. De Goey's in more of a natural midfielder. He's playing half forward as well. Um, so there's not a lot of synergy in that forward six because they don't play a lot together. The Adams hand pass, slightly errant. Petrevsky seat and couldn't take it, neither could Trelaw. But he backs it up with a good tackle on right, then tries to steal it. Is that a problem, Ruzzi? The lack of consistency with not just selection, but structural selection? Well, I'm staggered with Greenwood King in particular. I mean, you've got Greenwood now playing half forward flank. He was near best on ground last week uh, um, running around on Selwood, and Murphy's had 26. So that's the thing. And I'm loath to criticise other coaches because you don't know what they, they go through. But that's a staggering decision for me that he's now on a half forward flank and hasn't tagged anyone all day. And is it too late to tag now? You're 26 down? Not at all, because he's a good ball winner. You see, he had 19 last week against Selwood. Silvani bangs it along. Casbolt the target. Dunn got in front. Good mark. Hands it off to Reed. Chip oh. kick. Pendlebury turns inside to Crisp. He needs a target inside 50. Been the problem all afternoon. Hands it off to Adams. Hit the wrong side of his boot. Might still work. The chaos ball beats Greenwood. Petreski Seaton, the everywhere man. Hall Creek Cowboy goes wide. Right over the top. Charlie Kerno. Daisy Thomas in a panic. Dances around. This would be massive for Daisy and for the Blues. Bends it through. <laughs> Crazy stuff. And he's gone nuts, Daisy. It's Daisy of old, I'm not, not sure, I mean, he's taken an uncontested mark, but it's the step around, as we see, uh, Eddie, it's, the, it's more the step around here, guys. There's always going to be a big night for the Rat Pack, they just didn't <laughs> factor this in. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's loving that, look at it, giving to the old Collingwood faithful. He used to love him, of course. He's played pretty well today, Ruzzi. Yeah, look, as he Thomas, 19 disposals. He's looked dangerous, looked lively on top of the ground, but wasn't a bad decision by Crisp running through the centre yeah. of the ground. He had Fasolo on his own, or sorry, one on one at the top of the goal square. Terrible mistake by Jack Crisp. It's cost him at the other end. Once again, out to a five goal break. Penalty sends them to half forward. That's as far oh. as they're going. A ripping tackle by Billy Smets. Locks it up. Simpson picks himself up, not appreciating the attention he's getting from the opponent there in Maynard. Cruiser off the ground. Not a bad option. Interesting. Petrevsky Seaton, clever. Gibbs, wide. I love Cruiser's work right there. Oh, Gave away the free kick, but look at the follow-up. Cruiser was in the ruck contest back at half at half back there. He was the first out of that stoppage. Magnificent work rate by Matty Cruiser. He's run 45 metres, yeah. Brandon, from that stoppage. Terrific. He's a little bit stiff to, to give away that free kick. They love that as a coach, Ruzzi. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Side bottom to Goldsack, to Dunn. Suddenly down to Ward's half forward. And the dangerous Elliott gets claimed. Not before he got the hand pass away, but it was straight to Silvani. The defence has been miserly today for Carlton. Right gives a little ground. Plowman comes across the ground and they're out of trouble. Doherty has a look downfield, goes short. That's going to be okay. The mark taken by Williamson. He finds Simpson. Comes wider still. Billy Spence. Good composed build up here. They do need to take the heat out of the game a little bit, Carlton, but not completely slow the game out. So spread the ball around along the Casbolt here. Smith sporting the air conditioned jumper. Kicks up towards the half forward line. Where are the runners? Wietering Shh, tries to shrug a second tackle, unable to do so. Kazmok tries to bulldoze his way through, almost gets there, may get another chance. I think the players thought that it would stop. Eventually it does because no one was going anywhere. It's a message here. Obviously, three quarter time, Brendan Bolton would want to control the game, Maruzzi, but he doesn't want to bring him to a standstill. No, I agree. I think it almost becomes a half to three quarter pace game for Carlton because sometimes you get too quick in the last quarter. Turnover, turnover, turnover. The last thing they want to be doing is turn the ball over. They don't have to score. They want to score, but they don't have to score Carlton. 
Oscar Elliott tried the flick on to Goey. We've got Elliott now running. Plowman, Elliott, race on. Game could hinge on this possession. Plowman does well. Can't knock it through from there. Feeds it to Doherty. Brilliant. And the Carlton fans rise as one. Ed Kerno gets there. Meets Chris head on. Gives it to brother. He's got a couple of options in the middle. Missed his target. Oops. Little drop. Gold sack. Drag down from behind. Scrap the kick inside 50. Doherty sees it run. Kept it alive. Silvani. Colling with the numbers on the wing. Reed. That's saving mark. A little bit of experience here by Jack Where he was leading up at the footy. Yeah. He needed to stay as that longer target. Reed towards Taylor Adams. Cripps arrived just in time to affect the spoil. Cruiser caught unawares, then does the shepherding work to try and let Cripps through, but he's not going to get there. Adams once again working hard. Pendlebury, Trelaw, the pair combined. Pendlebury goes over the top. Somehow they've got to manufacture a score quickly. But Carlton denying them at the moment. Grundy, a high ball in towards the pocket. Which way will it bounce? Slap back. Carlton have got the numbers. White. Cool, steady, but smothered. May get another opportunity. Gets away from Degoe. Effective hand pass towards Williamson and eventually over the line with Doherty for another throw. See how messy the game's got now. That's what I was talking about before. It's really composure. You can see how both teams are getting scoring opportunities, but they're actually fluffing them with poor decision-making and poor skill execution. Nine minutes played in this final quarter. Both sides at two wins and four losses. Two and five will sound very poor. Cripps working hard and another stoppage. Big pack around it. Cruiser Grundy, as it's been for most of the afternoon. Murphy, Oops. another touch stolen by Pendlebury Broomhead. Little oh. fumble, left it behind. Well, that was his moment to have an impact. And he fluffed his lines. Ball up. Things are a bit frantic, Rizzi. I like Carlton's midfielders' effort and urgency around the ball. They work when the ball leaves the contest. They're getting plenty of numbers there to try and bog down the game. Grundy took it out of the air, kicked smothered. Monard tried to shepherd it away. Lays the tackle. Still tucked in there in this big crowd here. At the MCG knows this game's a breaking strain right now. Collingwood fans that have turned out for this home game can see it slipping away by the second. Grundy wins it. Pendlebury desperately trying to get his side moving. Murphy has other ideas, so too Petrovsky seek. Murphy goes down towards centre wing. Kerno, all the time in the world, has a look downfield. Wittering's the target. Still well outside 50, 75 from home. Plowman calling for it deep. He gets underneath this ball. A difficult one to grab. Plowman got a run at it, but then ran into Jamie Elliott. Yeah, really good decision from a young player in Kurnow to hold it up, to go to Wiedering. Really bad decision for yeah. a young player just to kick it 40 metres out into the turnover area. Here's Smith towards Fasolo. A long way from home. Smith takes it back again. This time from Phillips. Looks down towards half forward, Degoe. Greenwood making space, but he goes back to Smith. Yeah, just got no Collingwood forwards inside 50. That's why he had to go back. Now he finds his skipper, who's still 70 out. Pendlebury just pops it up. Where are the flyers? Weedering from behind. Got hands to it, but couldn't quite complete the mark. Carriage is lurking. Always a good sign, Rizzi. You're 30 points up, or you're winning the tackle count. Yeah, I that agree. That please Brendan Bolton. Yep. It shows the work rate, shows the intent. Probably not happy there, but uh, happy with their effort. An opportunity for Collingwood. Grundy tries to juggle it. Cripps caught. Collingwood's got the GWS next week. It's the last thing they'll be thinking of at the moment. And Carlton has got St Kilda. Jamie Elliott a bit sore there on the bench. He's getting his ribs attended to. Grundy got the reach. Got the down to Cripps. Phillips had a little flick back. Daisy Thomas, superb. Oops. Kick not so good here, though. 
Stays in for a little while and then drifts its way out. Collingwood ball. And they remain alive. 10.36 left. Reed has almost every player on the ground ahead of him. Darcy Moore calling for the long bomb. He's had one kick for the whole afternoon. Hoskin Elliott from four deep. Almost the mark for Solo, front of the pack. There's Jamie Elliott getting some work done. and He's been the one if anybody's going to kick a goal. Yep. So while he's off, looks more unlikely. Maynard gets his chance, stripped. Phillips out of nowhere. Oh, oh, it's on. The on play, Maynard. Maynard and uh, Kern Ed Kerno going at it. Well, he on caused play. a free kick yeah. earlier on that caused the turnover. He's been at it all day, Maynard. Carry to the target. Smith was the effective spoiler. Underground hand pass goes towards Greenwood, who got it out the back. Silvani, high ball. Reed underneath it takes the mark. Looks like it's Jamie Elliott's hip that's giving concern this day's Brownie, not the ribs, so that's, yeah. a, that's a positive. Thanks, David King on the boundary. One, two grabs. That's a mark. And he's had a very quiet day. There's Darcy Moore, but he's got the chance here to perhaps give his side the lift that they require if they're going to steal this game. Nine and a half minutes remaining, and they're five down. As good as. Moore. 35 out. Almost directly in front. Almost polite applause, but he's got the goal. Can it kickstart the pies? Okay. This is what you spoke about, Ruzi. This is the strength for Darcy Moore to stay on the move. It's hard for Sam Rowe to be able to lock him down. He keeps moving around. Sam Rowe looking for him, but can't watch the ball and Darcy Moore at the same time. This is good. This is when Darcy Moore is at his best. Instead of standing and planting his two feet, he moves around Ruzi and he jumps yep. the ball. Yeah, and one of the few times that Rowe didn't get body. You have to get body on a young, tall. I mean, he's generally he's at least 200, but Darcy yeah, Moore. So yeah. what we've seen in his early career is that if he gets a run and jump, he can mark it. If he doesn't, he just doesn't have the body strength to be able to, to, you know, to hustle and bustle one on one. Four goals, nine minutes, that's the equation. Pendlebury bangs it inside, 50. Got plenty on it, but Plowman, good saving mark. Doherty. March back. Again, they show some poise. Graham. 36 down, they were Collingwood. Still alive at 23 down with nine minutes left. Plowman. Phillips stands under it. Daisy Thomas tries for the big one and he's got it. <laughs> and he's enjoying his afternoon at the office. He's going to hold the ball up. <laughs> 157 games for Collingwood and a flag. That's the best I've seen him move for a while. Yeah. And he's hitting targets. Williamson, one of those young players. Plenty of them out there for the Blues. Silvani in just game two to Simpson. Great kick. Who's just an epic contributor. Was going to give it back to Murphy, but Murphy slipped off behind him. Sends it long. Charlie Curnow from four deep. Crashed it to the deck. Oh. Right. Played for the high. Didn't get it. Ed Curnow. High bomb. Goal square. Linden down with a fist. And it's through for a behind. So an even four goals. Under eight minutes remaining. This ball's going long, I think, Rosie. He can kick a long barrel. Yeah, Lyndon Dunn is the man, and he does. Towards the middle of the ground, Grundy was a target. Now the big man locks it up. Down there with Kerno and Pendlebury. Time rapidly becoming a factor for the Pies. Kerno. No distance, a little bit of height, but no distance. So play on is called. Free kick to Collingwood for in the back. Players screaming for it. And so finally, he does go in towards the middle. 
finding Maynard, who gets on with the job straight away, down towards the 50. And the mark taken by Moore. Called to play on. He swings around towards Cox over his head. And at the back, Fasolo has taken the mark. Yeah, good work there by Darcy Moore again. Was able to get on the move in the forward line, up, up outside 50 that time. Showed a bit of composure. Didn't just blaze away. Waited until his men got back inside 50 into that target zone. Big, big kick. This to make Carlton nervous. Yeah. And, well, that's yeah. why Fasolo's accuracy percentage is 38% here at the MCG. When you talk about nerves, that's why Brendan Bolton's made his way down to the bench. I think he's just trying to settle his troops down. We know there's a lot of youngsters in this team. Nine players with 50 games or less experience today, so... A good move from the Carlton coach. Yeah, second year as an AFL coach. Collingwood, no teenagers, two 20-year-olds. Carlton, three teenagers and two 20-year-olds. Petreski Seaton, one of those young players for the Blues, who's done well on the big stage. Greenwood got it up. Adams couldn't find a target. Trelaw loops it back. Smith. And it could have gone longer for Moore. Degoe. Moore still calling for it. He's had a better last quarter. He's got Cox, Moore, for solo, free kick, Collingwood's way. Oh, wow. Well. Oh, well, look at the replay, obviously. I thought Elliot grabbed Silvani first, but anyway. This man has been kicking pretty straight at goal today. Three straight. And to make it a three-goal game to the Boos for his fourth. We mentioned earlier, Collingwood needs a hero from somewhere. Didn't play last year oh. and he sprays it. Doesn't even score. Well, that's the story of the year, isn't it? The goal kicking. It's amazing. Two really gettable goals from Fasola and Elliott. Like a disease. Yeah. Quite often, the affliction Ruzi under pressure kicks as the players don't kick through it. I'd love to see the... See the side on. I'm not sure he drove through that ball well enough. You've got to go through the process. You cannot think of the outcome. Here's March Bank. Five minutes plus remaining. Williamson tucked in the back pocket for Carlton. Collingwood crowd hushed. You can't believe it. Ball was touched. So Ooh. Rowe. Is that going to be out on the full? No, it'll be kept in and mark. It wasn't exactly a pretty kick. <laughs> Ploughman has taken the mark. He's on the half-back line. Looks down towards a congested wing. Cruises the man, but well spoiled. Carriage to Graham. Too wide. Right idea because he had Murphy running. Just a little too wide, so Trelaw will bring it back into play. Time now definitely a factor, though. Four and a half minutes remaining. A lateral ball, finding how He finds Taylor Adams. Four goals, four minutes. Adams blasts it wide. Mason Cox, Silvani slipped over. Cox, Simpson, Simpson was ready for him. Phillips. Now let's have a look at this. Side on Jamie Allen. Under pressure. I don't like when the knee comes up and hits the chest, Ruzi. You like to see that classical action where it just keeps going up a little bit high under the chin for mine. Um, not great contact. You need to be able to drive through the ball a little bit better. Have that classical finish almost. And you see the old-time photos where that leg is straight and high. He seemed to lean right back on the kick, did he? Ed Kerno has the little brother. Side bottom got a knuckle on it. Ramsey back to side bottom. Smith. I have to take yeah. it on now. Broomhead turns it over. Petrovsky Seaton caught, had prior, got to be gone. Calling a play on to advantage. Degoe slips it wide to Moore. Blues getting numbers back though. He heads inside. Missed his target. And Simpson can mop up another 15 seconds here and show some poise. Goes wide. Bryce Gibbs. Yes. The senior players now showing the way. Gibbs steady to carriage. To put Carlton inside 50 once again. Cripps can't get a run. One, but he got a hand to it. Couldn't complete the mark. 
Trelaw gives it off to Pendlebury, who's tried his heart out. Back to the run of Trelaw. Now, Brody Grundy caught. Run down. Simpson gives it off to Kerno. Carlton inside 50 once more. Cripps uses the body. It goes over the back. Side bottom is there for Collingwood. Goes towards the half back line. Real urgency now. Two minutes and 46 seconds. Crisp across half back. Broomhead. Hand pass Aaron. Looking for Smith. Well, he's going to get a free kick for a high tackle by Cruiser. So Smith goes to the outer side. Gibbs infringing. I want to give it back quickly. And the clock continues to tick. Down to 216. Brendan Bolton. A nervous Brendan Bolton is just a couple of minutes away from a titanic victory. He'll be like a soccer manager soon. He'll be uh, walking up and down the sidelines. He'll be on the phone. He'll be telling the players just to get numbers back inside defensive 50. Collingwood forwards are trying to pull back, create some room at the front of this stoppage for a midfielder to run into. Crisp, which is what Collingwood haven't been. Phillips wide. Elliott twists inside, not a lot to go to. One last scramble towards goal, but that's been the tail. They haven't found enough scorers inside 50, and Chris sees it out, and Nathan Buckley knows now. 1.47 left. This is a massive opportunity that they've let slip. Big victory last week for Collingwood. They were hoping it was going to be a momentum changer for their season. Fantastic smother on Grundy's kick. Kerno, who's been epic from the get-go, and the ball rolls out of play. The Blues, this young Blues, second year under Brendan Bolton, are on the rise. Carlton at the moment on the live ladder, moving up to 11th position, and Collingwood languishing in 14th spot with just two wins from seven rounds. Gibbs works hard, can't get it out, neither could Kerno, but he's been fantastic. Carlton have been desperate from the outset. I mean, Ed Kerno typifies how you try to build your list. I mean, he's an experienced player. He comes back into the side, helps the young kids out, has 25 disposals. You need the older bodies to help the kids, and he's been terrific today. Trelaw down the bottom, Kerno down the bottom. Simpson tries to wrestle it away, but he's been claimed by Elliot. Taylor Adams couldn't take it cleanly. Sock it out towards the 50 line. Good tackle by Wiedering, and he's going to be rewarded. He is. Yeah, good point. Kerno's had a big last quarter as well. Yeah. I think Carl, uh, for the majority of the day, have scrambled better than Collingwood. Yeah. And we saw it in the first minutes of the game, didn't we? The, the, the Carl midfielders were desperate. Loose players for Carlton to bound. Gibbs, short. Inside the last 40 seconds. And one... Sorry, they've won both the contested possession and the tackle count, which is a good sign of that brownie. So they're getting inside the contest and they're able to travel and tackle when Collingwood win the ball. So it's a good effort. Murphy, 29. Cripps, 25 disposals. Both combining on that occasion. Crisp. Collingwood now. They've got to try and regroup. They'll face an angry GWS next week after... Their loss to St Kilda for Solo marks across half back. But for Carlton, this is a wonderful victory. <laughs> 23 points the margin in favour of the Navy Blues.